Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The Ohio State Buckeyes land probably the most talented player left in this transfer portal window as Davison Igbenosin commits to the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is a big deal for a couple of reasons. One, we talked about this a little earlier for Michigan. This would have been a massive addition for this Michigan team. As you look at that depth chart coming back in 2023, it's very good. They were missing a boundary cornerback. They had him up for a visit on Sunday. Obviously, Ohio State wins this one. Ohio State also, when you take a look at their own team, this is probably where they struggle the most on defense. And that front seven projected is going to be really good in 2023. And the concerns you had were at the back end, and they land an extremely talented guy who is a true freshman All-American from the SEC in Davis and Igmanos. And again, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Again, if you guys have been friends of the channel, you know we'd be rocking with Michigan. But it, like the, the, the support you guys have shown truly does mean a lot, even if you're an Ohio State fan. We talk a lot of college football in general, and the support you guys have shown truly means a lot. So again, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get in the comment section. Let's get a little rivalry going again. We appreciate you guys for real. Davis and Igmanosin, one thing that you love about him, you liked out of high school at least, is the long speed and the ball skills. This guy played both sides of the ball in high school, was a track and field athlete as well, and he has that great length. That is kind of when you look at what you want in a cornerback, especially a boundary cornerback. You want the length, you want the ball skills, and you want the long speed. He has all three of that, and he's a very, very fluid mover. Again, it's really rare to have a cornerback. You think about all those wide receivers you had to go up against in the SEC. It, he was awesome. He was extremely good. Started 10 games, 35 tackles, five pass breakups. And you know part of the selling point, I would guess, for Ohio State was, hey, you come to Ohio State, you're guarding the best wide receivers in the whole entire country. You think about Marvin Harrison Jr. You think about the young wide receivers they have coming in as well, Brandon Ennis, Carnell Tate. It's a loaded room, and it's good on good, and they were selling that to him. No doubt in my mind, iron sharpens iron. You're going up against wide receivers. You won't see a more talented wide receiver than you see in practice every day with Marvin Harrison Jr. when you're playing in 2023. And no doubt that was an appealing aspect for David Davis and Igmanos. On top of that, Jim Knowles is a phenomenal defensive coordinator. And I get there were some struggles year one, and we kind of talked about this in the summer. Jim Knowles does a – he runs a very complicated defense. And you saw that with Michigan a little bit too when they brought in Mike McDonald last year is – that defense, the players were still learning that defense. And you saw some blown coverages. You saw some players really struggle with what they were assigned to do on specific plays. And it reared its ugly head in the Michigan game and, and, and at parts in the Georgia game as well, specifically in that back end. And so I think when you add a guy as talented as David Davis Nick Nosen, it adds a ton of value for the Ohio State team. And you take a look at what they have coming back specifically at that cornerback room. J.K. Johnson, kind of the one of the uh, – more talented cornerbacks in that room, I believe, out of the 2021 class, transfers out to LSU. Denzel Burke is a stud. I think he was dealing with some injuries from what I was being told, which hurt his development and production in 2022. But he's going to be very good. Davison Ignosin, I would assume, is going to start on the other side of the field here. And you're looking at one of the best cornerback duos, not only in the Big Ten, but in the entire country. Again, this is where Ohio State struggled the most, was in the back end. Jim Knowles does like to load the box. He likes to bring different kind of blitzes, and you're going to leave your cornerbacks with a lot of responsibility, sometimes on islands, and having cornerbacks like Denzel Burke once he's healthy and playing his ball that we saw in 2021 in Davis and Ignosin, that's a massive tool in the toolkit for Jim Knowles, who's going to get even more exotic with that front seven and the blitzes he's going to kind of put on teams. Front seven's loaded. Tommy Eichenberg coming back. I thought he was a day two pick linebacker. Really like his game. And then the front seven, JT might be – he might be the, the best defensive player in the country coming back in 2023. You have Jack Sawyer, who's a guy that you're kind of waiting for him to break out a former five-star dude that shows flashes, not necessarily the consistency. You take a look at that defensive line. Mike Hall, I thought was absolutely awesome as well. The front seven is set for Ohio state. They recruit those positions really well and they develop those positions really well. I believe Larry Johnson's his name, who does a phenomenal job on the defensive line as well. The one question mark was that secondary. And Davis and Igbenosin is going to be a massive player who has that length, who has that long speed, who has the ball skills to really allow this Jim Knowles defense to cook. Because, again, you go back to the Michigan game, where did they struggle against? They struggled kind of giving up those deep balls. Davis and Igbenosin with the long speed and that length, I think will help that a lot. Now, projecting Ohio State in 2023, more of the question marks, I think all of the question marks really has to do with the quarterback. Kyle McCord, 
he's going to be awesome. And I don't think you have many questions about him. It's just how, how quickly can you get him playing top ball? I, he's going to be good. Again, another really talented dude, but CJ Stroud has been there for two years was phenomenal. And now you just have a new quarterback that you haven't really seen play much college football yet, but there's no easier job. And you also, I should also say Dewan Jones and Paris Johnson Jr. are two tackles that I value as day one picks. Dewan Jones kicked butt in the senior bowl, I believe in his first practice today as well. So you're missing two tackles who are going to be NFL dudes, but the talent around him, like the job doesn't get any easier. Kate Stover coming back at tight end. You obviously have a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., who's going to be an absolute stud. Some other young wide receivers, and then the young receivers coming in, Brandon Innes, Carnell Tate. The recruiting services are extremely high in Brandon Innes. Kyle McCord is going to have all the weapons at his disposal. You couple that with Ryan Day, who I know Ohio State fans have some question marks about him, which I don't necessarily agree with. Whether you question him or not, he's a phenomenal offensive play caller. He's a phenomenal offensive schemer. So you have Kyle McCord with one of the better offensive-minded head coaches in the league, coupled with the best running back in the league, and probably, the well, definitely the best wide receiver in the league and arguably the best running back coming back in Travion Henderson, who wasn't really healthy. But when you saw what he did as a true freshman, like I think he could be B. John Robinson level of dude. I think that's how good he is. It was a shame that you didn't really get to see him as healthy as he could have been. The question is on defense. That cornerback spot, it gets filled with Davis and Igmanosin coming in. Massive, massive get for Ohio State. Big win for Columbus. And again, it makes me sick to my stomach, but they get a lot better with adding Davis and Igmanosin, who, again, you see a lot of these transfers who are only going to come in for a year and go to the league or, or, or graduate. He's a second year guy coming in. He's got this year and next year before he's even draft eligible. You might even have him for three years, but he's a very talented dude that you know Jim Knowles is going to love to get his hands on and work with. Got to be optimistic if you're a Buckeyes fan. Again, if you guys do appreciate the content and wanted to keep this one short, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.